Today's project is an old-fashioned ceramic oil lamp, such as they would have used around the Mediterranean thousands of years ago. Let's talk really quick about the tools I'm using today. I've got some clay, a small pookie, I've got a gourd rib. I'm also gonna be using this wooden commercial pottery tool. I've got a needle tool for cutting it. You can use a knife or anything. And then I have a small piece of dowel. I'm gonna use that to form the nozzle that the wick will come out of. I'm also using an old credit card and also a pottery polishing stone. So that's all the tools I'm using today. If you're ready, let's get started. This is going to be the top of the pot. So I'm just trimming it down right now so it's nice and even. And then I'm gonna smooth it out with my gourd rib on the inside and then take it out of the pookie, clean up the bottom a little bit and I'll be done with this for a little bit and then I'll come back to it later. Now this is going to be the bottom of the lamp. So again, I pat out a pancake of clay, I press it into the pookie, I smooth it with the gourd rib and I trim it down. Now once I set the top on top of the bottom here, I notice that I actually trimmed it too high. So I go back and I trim it down lower so it's not too high of a vessel. Now I'm just wetting the two edges and I'm gonna stick those together. Now I need to cut a hole in the top for an opening. So I'm just using this barbecue sauce lid because it's about the right size that I want. And I'm just gonna cut that out and pop that piece of clay out. Now I'm using that wooden tool to attach the two pieces on the inside and then coming around and using it to attach the two pieces on the outside. And now I'm just smoothing it out, making sure that it's all attached and smooth on the inside. The first time I made one of these was last year. And I was so focused on getting the shape right that I kind of wasn't thinking about size. And this is a lot bigger than I want. I mean, it's gonna take a lot of olive oil to fuel this thing up. Now, in preparation for this project, I bought these wicks off of Amazon. So these should work good. And I wanna make sure that I have an opening that is large enough for the wick to go down, but not too large for the wick to fall down into the oil. I let the lamp sit and firm up for a little bit. And now I'm just taking it out of the pookie and smoothing out that edge using the credit card to just scrape it nice and round and smooth. Now I've got a nice small little pot. It's time to attach the spout and the handle. So I'm putting it into a larger pookie so I have room to work on that spout and handle. And now I'm gonna form the spout out of this flattened coil. Just rolling that clay around that dowel and smoothing it out. And then once it's formed, I can just rotate that dowel and just pull it free from the clay, leaving me with a little clay tube. Now I need to get it attached. So I'm just gonna use small balls of damp clay to press them together. And I'll do that all the way around to attach it. And then I'll use my needle tool to cut out the inside and use the dowel again to press that piece of clay out of the opening. And there it is. So now it's time to form a handle and I need it to be pretty small and dainty to match the size of the vessel. Unfortunately, I wasn't being careful about camera angles when I attached it, so I didn't get any good video of me attaching the handle. So there it is, attached. And now I'm just putting another coil on top to make a bit of a neck and I'll just smooth that out and trim it down. and it's all formed. Now I need to let it sit and firm up a little bit and then I'll smooth it and decorate it. This is the stone smoothing step. It's not polishing the pot. It's using a wet stone on a still rather damp pot just to give it a nice smooth texture. And now I'm ready to decorate. This is copper carbonate and I'm going to apply this just as it is with a little water. No binders, no fixatives, just the ground up mineral applied to the clay. This is red ochre mixed with water. So it's kind of the same idea as the copper carbonate, just a ground mineral mixed with water with no fixative. And if you're going to use ground minerals like this without a fixative, then the only way to make it stay on the pot after firing is to burnish it into the damp clay. And that's what I'm doing here. After firing, the copper carbonate will turn dark gray or black. 
while the red ochre will stay red. All right, it's all dry and ready to fire. I've preheated it in my oven for about an hour or so, so it's all ready to go. In fact, it's still a little warm from its trip through the oven. I'm doing this charcoal firing. If you're interested in how this works, I'll put a link to that right over here so you can check that out. So I'm gonna fire it real quick using lump charcoal. I've already got the fire started, so I'm just gonna load this up and get it going right now. Walk with me. Let's leave the past behind. Walk with me. There's something else we need to find. Well, I waited till morning to open this kiln up and it wasn't easy. I wanted to open it last night and see how everything came out, but I also wanted to do it on camera. And I know if I'd have filmed opening this up last night, you wouldn't have seen much. So let's open this up and see how the pots did. Okay, the pots all came out really good. Everything's fired nice and hard. Here's the little oil lamp, uh, which I'm real happy with. I will point out that that green calcium carbonate that I put on the spout and the handle looks different between the spout and the handle, and that's because there's nothing to hold that in place. It's burnished into the damp clay, and that's what makes it permanent. And I was able to polish it a little harder on the spout. The handle is a little bit delicate, and I was worried that if I got a little too rambunctious with it, that I'd break it right off. So uh, it got less polishing, and you can see that in the results. Uh, the spout is just blacker than the handle. So let's put a wick and some oil in this and see how it works. All right, another successful project. If you enjoy these kind of projects where I make something and then use it afterward, check out this video right here where I make a cooking pot and then cook some soup in it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.